that the Lord had made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our church. Would you all stand this morning? Welcome to those that are joining us by social media. It's so good to be here. We are eight months into the year of 2024, 23. And God has been good to us, hasn't he? This is Communion Sunday, the first Sunday of August. And it's an opportunity for us to worship the one who wove us into the family of God. We worship him today because you and I know that we didn't deserve to be born again. But yet God in his goodness toward us, he saved us, he sanctified us. The scripture uh, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have become, all, all th old things have been passed away. All things have become new, amen? So I don't care what you've done, who you've been with, where you've been. God says that there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Amen. And so we worship him today because we are clean before him. We are pure before him. We are the children of God. Amen. Amen. So let's worship him today and give him the praise and the honor that is due him. Say amen, somebody. Let's lift him up today. Let's praise his name. Let's magnify him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The praise and worship team is coming right now. Say amen for them. Hallelujah. Don't stop your praise this morning. Did anybody come to worship him this morning? Hallelujah. He is great Jehovah. He is a mighty God. If you're breathing this morning, would you shout in his house? I said, would you shout in his house? Would you shout in his house? Come on, turn up your praise this morning. Real praisers out here to join in with us this morning. Y'all put your hands together. Come on. Hey. There's nobody like our God. Nobody greater than our God.
to press a little further hallelujah somebody just begin to offer a praise to him Lord God we thank you in this place you alone are worthy Jesus Just pray. 
us in your presence behold the beauty of your face if i can just press press in your presence and never leave this place again if i can just press press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me i will be whole Give our God some praise in this house. Our communion scripture will be taken from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 23rd through the 26th verse. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may eat. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Amen. CTAB and welcome to the reconnection. Make sure you aren't missing our CTAB events. Text one of the following keywords to 22999 to stay in the know about events and updates happening at our church. The Bible tells us that giving is worship. This not only applies when tithing, but also in our deeds. So if you or someone you know is in need of food assistance, our next Families Fed Drive is Saturday, August 19th at 8 a.m. You can call our church office to sign up. And you can also donate to this ministry. Please visit us at ctabchurch.org forward slash give to submit a contribution as we continue to help others in need. Ladies, Women in the Well will return Saturday, August 19th with Cheryl Martin. We are still in our Women in the Bible series and Sister Martin will break down the life of Sarah this month. Join us at 10 a.m. 
Christian Tabernacle Church in Southfield presents Women's Night Live, an evening to be restored and renewed. Friday, September 22nd at 7 p.m. This free event features speakers Jada Edwards and Sonya Curry, mother of NBA great Steph Curry, plus music from Miranda Curtis. Women's Night Live at CTAP Church, September 22nd at 7 p.m. 26555 Franklin Road in Southfield. For more info, visit ctapchurch.org. cheerful giver. So remember, you can give through our church website, text GIVE to 989-282-7136 or through our Tithely app and Cash app. If you are here in person with us, you can drop your tithe in the bins up the back of the sanctuary. You can also mail in your tithe to 26555 Franklin Road, Southfield, Michigan 48033. Thank you for worshiping with your giving. To all our visitors and guests, welcome to CTAP and thank you for worshiping with us today. CTAP strives to be a friendly church and our pastors strive to be friendly pastors. Now, if you would like to join our ministry, please call our church office Tuesday through Friday at 248-213-4770. If you're here in person, you can report to rooms E and F after service to join today. See a greeter to direct you to that location. Thanks for tuning in to The Reconnection. Have a blessed week and we will see you back here next Sunday. CTAP Church and welcome. We are so happy to have you here today. We want to extend a very warm welcome to any first time guest and well, first time visitors, excuse me, that have made your way here today. If you are visiting us online, we appreciate you for clicking and stopping right there. And for those of you who pressed your way through the rain to get here to maybe find an inspiring message that you need to hear or something to take home with you, we thank you for choosing CTAB for that. Now, of course, we do want to make sure that you stay in the know of what's going on here at CTAB. So please, in your spare time, visit our website at ctabchurch.org. Now, before I do that. If there are any in-person guests here for your first time visiting, we would love to acknowledge you. Can you please stand for us? Thank you so much for taking time to visit us. We love, we want to love on you and we want you to know that you are welcome here. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. James L. Mormon and his beautiful wife who was here today, our lovely Loretta Mormon. We thank you so much for visiting us and we want to invite you back again. Like I said before, you can visit us online at ctabchurch.org or follow us on social media. I know a lot of you have social media that's at ctabchurch. We love you and we thank you and come back and see us again. Someone say, everything belongs to God. Come on, saints. Tell someone else, everything belongs to God. Amen. Now the time has come. We can sow a seed back into his kingdom, Father. For all he's done for you and us so saints the scripture is clear it says god loves a cheerful giver are there cheerful givers in the sanctuary are there cheerful givers online i know they are so let's shout with a voice of triumph because saints it's time to give hallelujah you can download the free tithely app Download it to your smartphone or your tablet. 
You can cash app to CTAB Church. You can text GIVE to 989-282-7136. You can give your offering in the bins in the back. Amen. You can mail your gifts to Christian Tabernacle Church 26555 Franklin Road, Southfield 48033. Amen, saints. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bow down before you. We magnify your name. We thank you for another day to sow into your kingdom. Father, bless these gifts that have come forth. Bless the givers and those that had a heart to give. Let each of these seeds reap a bountiful harvest. In Jesus' precious name, let every heart say amen, amen, amen. Let's give God some more praise in this house. Saints. Hallelujah.
without him I'm telling you he is so good to us and when we've gone as far as we can go when we're in situations to where there's nothing left when the doctor tells you there's nothing else he can do how many know that there is power in the name Jesus if you don't have a prayer to pray you don't have words to say it's just one name it's just one name Yes, it is, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I come and let you know, church. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power. Help me say, there's power. There is power. We know this. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and sing it. There is power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We want the world to know there is power. There is power.
hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Come on, give God some praise in this house. For he alone is worthy. Of the goodness of Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. And all he's done for you and I, our soul should cry out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I feel like it here. I'm wired. Look what the Lord has done again. Now I need just three of you. Now if 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 you don't want to praise them, you sit down. If you want to praise them for real, shout like you lost your mind. Glory to God. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah. Seated. I was in for three months. I was in excruciating pain for three months. I was in pain every day, all night. My wife would cry. I was in that kind of pain. This physician that we sought out. Uh, and when he saw me in this much pain, and he is over two hospitals, when he saw me in this much pain, he began to cry. He said this to us, my wife and I. He said, he said, I'm going to fix this for you. This particular physician, he began to cry with me. And my wife cried, and we cried together with him. And this type of surgery may have resulted in having metal in my back, cutting on me. I have no metal in my back. No cuts on me. God can do anything. He's a good savior. He's a healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. Glory to God. Hey! Hey, hey! He's a miracle worker. They said, I heard, heard that, that this type of surgery could have resulted in where I couldn't bend or bow. Jehovah, 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 
<laughs> I am, uh, as I am still recovering, the doctor did release me to go back to work. And so I'm back to work. And so because uh, yeah, I want to make certain that I don't strain, I feel like straining right now. <laughs> I ask my son, my dear beloved son, Pastor Stacy Foster, to come today and share with you a word from God. y'all put your hands together and give the Lord a clap offering a praise for our man of God come on put your hands together God is good he is a healer hallelujah we're, we're praying for a full recovery that God will restore his strength I, I, I want you to I don't want you to just stop just there's something about praise praise not only looks good on you it looks good on you scripture says but the Bible says that God has ordained praise in the mouth of babes to silence the voice of the enemy. So why don't you put your hands together one more time and just bless the Lord and give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, I bless your name. I praise you and I magnify you for you alone are worthy of blessing and glory and honor and praise. Father, I pray this morning for clarity of thought and for clear articulation. I pray, God, that you would give us a word, a word in season, Lord God, that would not simply challenge us, but Father, transform us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. On the evening of February 26, 2012, a man by the name of George Zimmerman fatally shot Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman, a 28-year-old who self-identifies as Hispanic, was a neighborhood watch coordinator for the gated community where Martin was visiting relatives at the time of the shooting. Zimmerman became suspicious of Martin and called police. Zimmerman was injured during a physical altercation between the two and shot Martin with a pistol he was licensed to carry. In a widely reported trial, Zimmerman was charged with murder of the second degree for Martin's death, but acquitted by a jury after claiming self-defense. You see, the reason that he could claim self-defense is because of a law that was enacted in 2005 by the state of Florida and has since been held by over 27 states, including the state of Michigan. The law that he stood on was called Stand Your Ground sometimes called a line in the sand, or no duty to retreat. This law provides that people may usually, uh, usually use deadly force when they reasonably believe it to be necessary. Now, I don't know about you, I believe that he wrongly used stand your ground when he killed Trayvon. It was a tragedy and a travesty, and you hear all over the country, in these 27 states, people over and over using stand your ground. But can I suggest to you this morning that stand your ground was not something that man came up with 2005. But the Apostle Paul, over 2,000 years ago, gave us a mandate from the Spirit to stand our ground. We sang this morning that the chains are falling, that we are free. The problem is that many of us as believers, even though we're free, we're not standing our ground. Even though the chains have fell, even though God has brought us into a victorious life, sometimes we find ourselves retreating from the enemy rather than drawing a line in the sand and standing our ground. I want you to turn this morning, if you will, to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to begin reading from verse 10 through 18. This is simply a primer this morning. I don't have time to go in depth 
into the whole armor of God, into what spiritual warfare looks like. But I, I want to give you uh, this whole concept of how and why we need to stand our ground. Because it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. No longer to be a slave. No longer to be bound. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The apostle says a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. Some translation says for the schemes, the methodologies. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the whole body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Powerful, powerful portion of scripture. The book of Ephesians is a book that I so love because Paul deals with what I call in the first three chapters positional truth. He never deals with sin. He never deals with sin in, in either of the three chapters of the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians. He tells us who we are. The reason I believe that so many of us believers aren't standing our ground is because we don't really know who we are in Christ. The reason that we're not victori victorious is because we don't know him and we don't know who we are. And so we refuse to stand our ground and we give in to temptation and to test. We give in to the proliferation of all the overwhelming sin that comes and assaults us. So I want to share with you what I call two realities that we need to embrace this morning if we're going to stand our ground. Only two, but I believe they're powerful if we get them. The first reality is that we need to wake up to the reality that we are in a perpetual spiritual battle. We're in a perpetual spiritual battle. In other words, perpetual means ongoing. Doesn't just stop when we get saved. I mean, you know that there's, when you became a Christian, you became a believer, you were enlisted into an army. The problem is we forget that this is an ongoing battle. Look at what he says. He says in verse 12 or verse 11, he says, put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies all of the methodologies, all of the schemes, the tactics of the devil. How many of you know the devil comes with a plan? Yeah. He, he comes literally with a game plan against you. See, Satan is not omniscient. Omniscient simply means to be all-knowing. He doesn't have all knowledge. He's very limited in his knowledge. But what Satan is, is what I call a behaviorist. He studies your patterns. He watches your behaviors, your habits, your hangups. And then he designs a scheme to get you trapped up, yeah. tripped up. Yeah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if, if, if you're here this morning. I shared with you a couple months back that <clears throat> everyone in this room, you're either coming out of a battle Anybody in this room just came out of a battle? You're in the middle of a battle or you're about to go in a battle. If you're a believer, you're in one of those three categories. Can I get a bottle of water, somebody? You're in one of those three categories. You're either in a battle, coming out of a battle, or you're getting ready to go into a battle. But too often, for the believer, we think that this world is a playground. When in reality, it's a battleground. How many know what I'm talking about? That when we got saved, we thought that God wanted us to be happy and wealthy and whole. And he does. 
But the lie is, is that the enemy tricks us into telling us that we're not in a battle. And the battle is for the souls of men and women, for our children. <laughs> I don't want to scare you, but I do want to prepare you. For the believer, and Dad can attest to this, he, he tells us, I mean, for the last 30 plus years, he's been telling us that life, watch this, life for the believer is a series of blessings and battles. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Blessings and battles, blessings and battles, and you can have both going on at the same time. Dr. Bernard told us that you can be in two seasons at the same time. So it's possible to be in a season of blessing and a season of battle. Turn, if you will, to Luke chapter 4. When I say you're in a perpetual battle, <coughs> what happens oftentimes is the enemy will come and will sense, and y'all pray for me because I know my throat wasn't acting up before I got up here. <laughs> but it's okay, that's the devil is alive. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It'll be formed in fashion, but this word will go out. So the enemy, he wants us to forget that we're in this perpetual battle. It's a spiritual battle. After Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted by the enemy for 40 days and for 40 nights, scripture says that the enemy, after he tempted him, Luke chapter four is the only text that says this. Look at what it says in the Amplified Version, verse 13. And when the devil had ended every temptation, the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him. That is, he stood off from him until another more opportune and favorable time. Look at the New Living Translation. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. Notice what it says, he left, he couldn't get Jesus to give into the lust of the flesh or to the pull of the world. He wouldn't give in to any of those temptations. So the Bible says that Satan departed until a more opportune time. He waited until the time was right and we know that three years later, it was in the garden called Gethsemane where the enemy would think that he would give his last and death blow. How many of you had those times and those seasons where you had reprieve from the enemy and you thought it was over? You, you know how you're, you're fighting this fight, you're fighting a good fight, you get the victory, and you think it's over. Listen, it, it's not over. Because the enemy is relentless. First Peter chapter five, verse eight. Peter says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. For he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your what? Listen to, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. What the enemy is after is our faith. Remember Jesus said, he said, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail. And when you return, strengthen your brother. Listen to me. What happens is the enemy wants to rock your world. The enemy will get you in this place where you're lulled into a place of complacency and he'll hit you so hard that you'll want to give in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So Peter says, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in this eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you've suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you and will place you on a firm foundation. <laughs> Think about this. I don't know if you've seen the, the, the example that our pastor has set for us. A quadruple heart attack. Pro 
prostate cancer. Every imaginable attack you can have against a man of God, but he's still standing. <laughs> and he stands by faith. The enemy not only tried to kill him, but watch this, he's trying to kill you as well. So for those of us in this room, there are only four types of people in this room. Those that are unaware, in other words, you've never heard a message about spiritual warfare, you don't know what's going on. You, you're sitting in service and you know, you think, man, the songs are great, the worship is great, children's church is wonderful, but you're clueless as to this battle that's going on. In the early 1920s, I believe it was, it was when we discovered these things called germs. Doctors would go into hospitals and they would actually go and work on, sur to have surgeries on patients, but then they would go downstairs and they would work on dead bodies. They would actually go touch bodies. They didn't know that when they touched the dead body and then came back upstairs, that if they didn't wash their hands under running water, they would contaminate the patient and the patient would become infected by these unthing, unseen things called germs. How many of you know we can't see germs, but they're real? How many of you know we can't see principalities and powers and rulers of this dark world, but they're real? So some of us are unaware. We've never heard a message. Some of us in this room are unrealistic. Everything's the devil. Everything's the devil. Now, now I, I can tell you that it might be the devil that's attacking my throat, but it might just mean that I got something in my throat. It might be something that the enemy is attacking us because the mic keep going out. It could mean we just need to change the batteries. It could be that your boss is being used by the, by the devil to attack you. Or it could just be that you need to get to work on time. <laughs> Some of us are just unrealistic and we blame everything on the devil. And some of us in this room, we're just unprepared. We don't understand how to put on the full armor of God. But here's what I believe God really wants us to get to the place where we become unmoved. We're not moved. We can, get, we can take a lick and we keep on going. I love seeing, this is what I love seeing about Dad. This is what I love seeing about him. I love, even though he's in pain, he's recovering, he still shows up. He still will come out here and encourage us even though he might be in pain and could stay home and watch us online. But he shows up to give you an example, to give me an example. I came here on Friday and, 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 and he called me, he said, hey, I want you to come and see me, son. And I, I came in and I can tell you, I was, I was disturbed. I was, I was, I was uh, going through. I was literally in this place where I, I'm, I'm just getting hit by the enemy. By the time I left, I was infused with faith. See, there's this perpetual spiritual battle that's going on. And sometimes if we are unprepared, uh, we are unaware that the enemy doesn't care anything about you and he'll wait until that opportune time to pounce. When you're most vulnerable, when you think that you got it together. <sighs> I'm just talking to myself this morning. I thought me going to a Christian organization that, that literally, and I love my organization, I love where, where God has me, but, but I realized that warfare was even more prevalent there than it was for me being in the city of Detroit working in the inner city church. You know why I see? Because in, in the city, I'm dealing with a lot of brokenness dealing with a lot of hurt, dealing with a lot of trauma, dealing with a lot of pain. But when I got into a corporate setting, see the enemy is so sudden because all you see is abundance and structure of the Christians. But how many of you know the enemy works through people? Now, now, now watch this, don't, don't look at your wife, but how many of you know 
your spouse or your, your husband, your, your wife or your husband, that's, they're not your enemy. That person on your job, that, that's, they're not your enemy. Remember when Peter came to, to Jesus after Jesus had just shown himself on the Mount of Transfiguration and Jesus comes down and all of a sudden he tells Peter who he is and what you find is that all of a sudden Jesus is telling him, I've got to go to the cross. I've got to go to Jerusalem and there I'll be killed. And Peter says, never on my watch, Lord. Not, not on my watch. And Jesus doesn't rebuke Peter. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. It was the enemy that was using Peter. Are y'all following me this morning? Here's the second reality that we need to embrace. We need to stay suited and booted for the battle. We need to stay suited and booted for the battle. What I mean by staying suited and booted? See, see for some of us, we don't come prepared. For some of us, we are complacent. Scripture tells us in Amos chapter 6, he says, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. In other words, that word to be at ease means to be complacent. Where, where we forget because we have some measure of prosperity, some measure of affluence. We got good jobs, we got a good family, live in a good community. And oftentimes what happens, we get complacent to this thing called spiritual warfare. We don't think that it takes all of that to get into worship. Some of us won't come to church until after worship is over. Oh, come on now. We don't come to after worship because we just want to hear the word. But see, worship is the only part of the service that really is not about you. Worship is about God. And so sometimes we get so complacent because God has blessed us, God has prospered us, and has put us into a place of ease. Yeah. Marines will tell you when they go to battle, the most dangerous thing for a man at war, for a, a Marine or a soldier or a special force unit, is to become complacent. They cross a bridge every day going into the city where they're dangerous opponents. But week after week after week, nothing happens. There are no IUDs, there are no bombs, there are no attacks or assaults. And then one day they decide to go and they violate protocol. They don't check the bridge. They don't check the ground, they're at ease. And then they step on a landmine and lose their life because they became complacent. I don't need you to raise your hand, but how many of you in here have become at ease? You become complacent. And all of a sudden, the enemy smacks you. He hits you. You become discombobulated. A little out of sorts because you weren't ready for the blow that came. See, if you stay suited and booted, you don't have to get suited and booted. What well, does it say? Say that if you got a plan, if, if you're already ready, you don't have to get ready. Listen, Mike Tyson, that great theologian, He said, everybody's got a plan until you get hit in the mouth. Tim Keller says, what sin does is sin acts as a narcotic. Sin puts you to sleep. Sin makes you say, well, there's always tomorrow. Sin makes you think moderation is in all things. Real Christianity wakes you up to the seriousness of the situation. Hear me, believer, it's not a one and done. When you came into Christ, listen, we were babes, but you know there comes a time when God says it's time to grow up. Look at what Paul says in verse 13. He says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. One translation says, in the evil day. Listen, if you haven't experienced an evil day, just hold on. Count yourself blessed for now, but, but hold on. I remember I told dad, I said, I'm in a situation where I'm at work and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my boss and it felt so evil. Anybody ever felt? It, it was as though I was watching uh, in 2020 when George Floyd lost his life and the man had his knee on his neck. And I sat there watching it and I began to cry. 
I began to cry because I felt like that could be me or that could be my son or my brother or my neighbor. And this day I'm sitting in, in front of my, my boss and I, and I felt like he was putting this knee on my neck. And I kept saying, God, what is this? God, we're believers. God, this is supposed to be a man of God. But what I realized is that I had gotten at ease in Zion. It wasn't my boss. Hear me, hear me. It wasn't my boss. It was the spirit that was using my boss. See, Scripture says that we're not ignorant of Satan's schemes. See, he comes with a plan. And if we're not careful, we're unaware of his plans and how he works and why he works. So if I wasn't careful, I'd get in the flesh and become offended by this man. Jesus says in Luke 17, it's impossible that offenses not come. That's why the writer of Proverbs says, guard your heart with all diligence. See, it would have been easy for me to get angry and upset and mad. But guess what? That's a trick. That's a scheme. That's a tech to the enemy. Paul says, be angry and sin not and give no place to the devil. That word place in the Greek language is the word tapos. Don't surrender ground to the enemy. We get angry and we move into sin. We give some ground that the enemy can take and use to his advantage. It's almost like a door where, where you got a door that's open and now you're trying to close it, but there's a jam there. And the enemy has a legal right to operate in your life. It says be angry and sin not and give no place, no opportunity to the devil. Look at what he says. Therefore, put on a, every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Verse 14, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Now, Paul, I told you this is going to be a primer because I only have a few minutes. I can't give you the whole thing. But Paul was in a Roman prison. And he was yoked to a, or handcuffed to a Roman guard. And Paul is probably looking at this Roman guard and looking at the armor he has on. And so he's writing to believers. And he says, you know what you need to do? You need to put on the belt of truth. You see, the belt of truth, listen, he starts with that because the belt would hold everything else up. The belt of truth, he says, listen, God desires you. You know why Jesus came? When Jesus came to earth, he's testifying before Pilate. We can hold, come up with a whole lot of reasons why we think he came. The Bible says that Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth. Veritas in Latin. Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth. You know why he came to testify the truth? Because since the Garden of Eden, the enemy and humanity have tried to challenge what truth is. Uh, yeah, come on, are y'all following me? Adam, Eve, did God really say Eve? that you shouldn't eat of any fruit of the garden? Well, he, he, is that really true? So the enemy tries to get us to put a question mark where God put a period. Did God really say that he made Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve? Did God really say? Why are we trying to figure out is he a he or is she a she? My son-in-law said he had a man, and I, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I just really want to talk truth. See, truth will either, according to John 8, 32, will either set you free or make you mad. Yeah. Why we got a full-grown man, look like a man, six foot seven, look like a man, Sitting in front of my son-in-law, he says, sitting in front of son-in-law, he's taking the application, he's talking to him, and my son, being polite, says, hey, sir, and he said, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, that's the third or fourth time that you've called me sir. I don't identify as sir. Six foot seven, full beard, jeans and Timberlands on. But he says he identifies as miss. 
Sounds like confusion is going on. So Paul says, put on the belt of truth. Gird your loins up with truth. And he's not just talking about truth that's, that's, that's objective. He's talking about truth in your inner man. Integrity. And put on the armor, God's righteousness. Now, now, can I tell you that Stacy has no righteousness of his own? Isaiah said, my righteousness is as filthy rags, and so is yours. Isaiah says that my righteousness and your righteousness is like a filthy minstrel cloth. Not trying to get gross, but he's trying to be graphic for you. The righteousness that you and I can stand on is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That my righteousness is come from him. I have no righteousness of my own. And so he says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Right? He says, take up the shield of faith. Hear me. The enemy in that day would have these flaming arrows that they would put on the tips of this tar, and they would light them, and then they would fire them into the camp. And so Paul says, take the shield and put up your shield of faith. They would take a shield and they would put leather on it, and then they would soak it in water for hours and hours and soak it in water and put it on leather and put it on ta taunt on the shield. So when the arrows came because they had been soaked in this fluid, this liquid, they would be extinguished. See what happens when the enemy shoots that flame of lust your way? Come on somebody. The arrow of anger, of resentment, of disbelief, when you have your shield of faith up, it'll distinguish every fiery arrow. Listen, listen, I, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to get any points with dad. I don't, I don't, but listen, I don't know anybody that has faith like he has. I, I mean, think about the things that he's going through. It's easy to just give up. It's easy just to sit down and say, you know what, I'm overwhelmed, I done went through too much, I done fought my good fight, I'm done. But he continues to walk in faith to show us why we should continue to walk in faith. I told dad something the other day, I said, God, dad, I said, I don't know, I might be thinking about doing something else, I don't need to go and get my, I'm, I'm planning on getting a new car in, in a couple weeks, but I think I might, he said, go get your car. Y'all don't hear me, I ain't got time to unpack the whole story. But the enemy was throwing these arrows my way when I kept saying, oh man, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. You know, because again, you can get in your flesh and you can think that it's this man or it's that man, is this. Listen, no. Sometimes it's the enemy in a me. It says, put on salvation as your helmet and take up the word of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Listen, I'm going to have a guy come and play for me. Just play softly. Listen, the helmet of salvation, sometimes a soldier wouldn't want to put on the helmet because it's hot, right? I, I can tell you that for me, the helmet of salvation is that assurance, that reassurance, that if anything comes your way, if you take a blow, you can take it. The last couple of weeks, over and over again, I know none of you have never maybe experienced this. How do you know you're under spiritual attack? When you're depressed, when you're angry, when you're full of lust, pride, selfishness, when you don't want to get up and come to church, don't want to watch online. When you find yourself in this place, I can tell you, the last three or four years, Financially, the best place in my life. But I've never felt so much demonic attack. Never dealt with depression over 30 years and pastoring 22 years in one place. Five years in another place. Never dealt with depression until the last four years. I said, God, what is this? He said, son, don't get that easy as I am. You've got an enemy who is relentless. but I've given you the victory. 
Listen to me. See, we don't fight, as believers, we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. I watch a, a show on TV and then don't laugh at me, make fun of me, but I love her. I was a fan of wrestling for years. And then I had to stop watching it because there was so much violence. But there's a show out called The Dark Side of the Ring. And The Dark Side of the Ring, it actually tells you the inside story of these wrestlers and their lives. You see, if you didn't know, I, I don't want to spoil this for you wrestling fans, but in the wrestling world, the fights are always fixed. They already know who's going to be the champion before the bell ever rings. Now, they got to get out there and become entertaining, and they got to do their thing, but the fight is already fixed. How many of you know, for believers, the fight is already fixed? We win. We win. I want you to stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. For those of you who would be bold enough to say, Pastor Foster, I'm in a battle. And I need you to pray for me. I want you to raise your hand. Amen. 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 You can put your hand down. Pastor, come down here. Come on down here with me. I want you with my son. I want, we talked the other day about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you cannot see. I want you, C-Tab, to come here, close to me. I want to share with you how to have faith that you can't even understand. This man has grabbed the whole of my faith. And he's, 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 he's moving in a place he's never gone before. Powerful man of God. His faith has increased beyond measure. It's not his company. He's being tested for a work that he can't imagine and prosperity that he can't imagine. I want you to just, just, just reach out to me in, in my spirit, man, along with my, my son. Today, God will honor your faith. Today, God will honor I've always walked in faith and by faith my wife and I today your faith shall be increased beyond measure glory to God today is your day of impeccable and powerful faith never question again your faith never in your faith again from this day forward. When you ask God now for anything, don't question your faith. Don't you ever dare again question your faith. And I've watched my son grow beyond measure. He and his wife. I said to him the other day, don't worry about nothing. God, God got this thing. God's got this thing. Now stop worrying about it. Stupid stuff. We walk by faith and not by sight. And stop pre 
pretending that you have faith. Stop pretending that you have faith. Know you have faith. Know it. Know it. We walk and we talk and we move in the But without faith, you can't please God. I want to please God. Come on, I want to please God. Oh, when you please Him, you have no idea what's about to happen to you. Let no one again in Esita question your faith. Whatever you need, do it in. Now give God a praise. So now, you have my faith. You have my faith. Your pastor's faith. Your pastor's faith. Glory to God. You have me. should be dead five or six times. Yes. But I'm here today yes. to tell you. Yes. Grab hold to our faith. Where am I preaching? Go, go up on the pulpit. Go up there. Go up. All preachers go up on the pulpit right now. All preachers. Male, female, all preachers. Pastors. Increase your faith. Yes, God. Increase your faith beyond measure. I said beyond measure. That you can't even explain it. Increase it by faith. Now push out toward the people, out the people, and declare that they have now the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now give God praise. In this house, it is so, it, and so it is. It is so, and so it is. The pastor Foster come down and this and this mystery. Give the benediction in faith. Give the benediction. Hallelujah. 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 Would you guys stand right where you are? We're gonna give the benediction. Listen, I, I love the fact that Dad has declared the word of us, challenged us to go in faith, to grow in our faith. Would you lift your hands up to the Lord and say this with me, Father? I thank you for our man of God. We receive the word. We receive the challenge. This week, we shall go in faith, and we'll grow in our faith, and we'll glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you.